huge treat. She has done workshops for us before, which were absolutely amazing. She holds an MBA and serves as an associate faculty member at the University of Arizona Global Campus in the Forbes School of Business and Technology. Additionally, she is the CEO and founder of the University of Wellness and the Brave Leadership School. After working for more than two decades in the wellness industry, she now trains and certifies students as holistic health coaches, behavioral change specialists, yoga teachers, and more. She also does private leadership and business consulting, along with heading leadership development programs. She's currently getting her doctorate in executive leadership from the University of Charleston in West Virginia and holds an international leadership coaching certification from the International Coaching Institute. Wow, I know that we are in for a huge treat today. If you have any questions throughout this event, I'm going to be moderating the chat uh, in the Q&A area. So uh, feel free to post any questions in the chat. Um, if you would like to turn your cameras on, that's fine, but something to consider if you want to leave them off. We may be doing some fun and exciting floor exercises as well. So I am thrilled to turn the floor over to Carissa Coos, who is going to help us soul stretch and connect our minds and our bodies. Carissa. Thank you. You're so good at that, Brandy. I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. So um, she told you a lot of my bio, um, but I'm going to share a little bit of kind of the deeper story into how I came about teaching soul stretch, because some of you may connect with that. So I think storytelling, especially in leadership, is so important. Um, so this is titled Soul Stretch, Honor Your Body, Free Your Mind. Um, some of you may have heard this story about me, but when I was about 25 years old, I was fitness queen, uh, meaning I woke up every day, I exercised, I ate right, I was certified in every single form of exercise that you could possibly imagine. Um, got Anytime there was a new form of exercise, I was learning it. Uh, new exercise equipment came out. I was on the bandwagon. And then I went through a personal trauma. And I didn't connect at first that the reason why I stopped exercising and working out and eating right was because of the trauma. And I just no longer felt comfortable in my own body. It's almost like I escaped my body. I was no longer connected to it. Um, and so I went on this deep transformation and, and became a spiritual teacher. And it kind of just opened, opened me up more than just fitness. And I, that's when I got more into the wellness industry, because I realized that it doesn't matter how good you look on the outside. If you don't feel good on the inside, it doesn't matter. Um, and people can exercise until they're blue in the face, but if they don't do the inner work, um, it's not going to last. Um, so that's kind of how this came about. I started to work on meditation and yoga and things that really helped me go inward versus just always going out. Um, and anytime you've ever, if any of you've ever been through any kind of trauma, um, our bodies tend to take over in certain situations. Um, there's a book called The Body Keeps the Score, and it's a world-renowned psychologist who has truly found that unless we move the body, uh, we literally can't heal some of the stuff that we've gone through because the, it's in our bodies and it will take over. Um, so that's how this came about. Um, I look at that now as a huge blessing because now I understand what it's like to be a trainer who gained weight. I understand what it's like to struggle to exercise because it's something that I still uh, struggle with. Um, so it actually really helped me to create more empathy in my business and my relationships with my clients. So that's kind of how Soul Stretch came about. Um, I then went on to become a yoga teacher and then I went on to train other yoga teachers. Um, and the yoga teacher training that I created is very much about you know, really connecting to what's holding us back, not just physically, but mentally as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do some meditation and some chair yoga. I figured most people that were coming to this event uh, were most likely at their desk. And so I want to teach you guys stuff that you can take with you versus stuff that we'll just do today and then you can't do it again. Uh, we're also going to talk about chakras and we're going to talk about... Um, different techniques that you can do to get out of the, the head and into the body where we are less focused on negative things. And then 
We're going to do some exercises to create some intentions for the new year. Um, just another story. Uh, on New Year's Eve, I actually, my, my holiday was kind of thrown off because I had a friend pass away. And about two hours before New Year's Eve, um, I was cleaning my house. And I was like, you know what? It does not feel like New Year's Eve. I'm just going to record the ball dropping and do it whenever I feel like it. I don't have to do it when the universe is doing it. And then literally the next day, one of my friends posted something that she's always felt very aligned with the, the lunar new year, which is actually February 1st. And I was like, that's so funny. I never really felt like our new years. I, I just never really felt ready for it or never felt like the right time, but February 1st is perfect. So I am going to be celebrating my new year's on February 1st. Um, so we'll do some exercises to develop some goals and do some intention setting. Um, and that'll help you. Even if you've already done that, it's nice to just redo it. And I created a little group, uh, group uh, workbook for you guys so that you can work on it outside of this as well. So lots to cover um, this workshop can be done in a weekend. It could be done in a week. So I'm going to try to cover a good amount of stuff in a short amount of time without totally overwhelming you guys. So the first thing I want to do is if I can get this to move. Okay. Is a grounding meditation. Anytime we come into an event like this, uh, whether we're the teacher or we're the tech team, or we're working at the university of Arizona, it can be just chaotic, just getting into this. So I always like to start everything with a grounding meditation. And this is actually a tool that you can use anytime. Like if you really feel like you're too much in your head or there's just so much going on, you can just sit and do a grounding meditation. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to, I have this little alarm clock that has, it's called Zenergy and it actually has, um, some amazing meditation music on it. So let me know in the chat if this gets too loud, um, but I'm gonna turn it up. So I want everyone to go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And I just want you to exhale with a sigh. The louder the sigh, the more you release. So inhale in and exhale. And now I want you to feel your feet rooting firmly into the ground. Continuing to breathe. One thing that we do when we get stressed is we hold our breath. It's so important to just exhale, let it go. So take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale. And just feel once again, your feet just rooting. This is a very simple exercise of just feeling your feet rooting firmly into the ground. The only thing that matters right now is this present moment that we're in past is gone. The future has not happened yet. We are just here in this moment. So one more deep inhale in and exhale. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. We're going to be doing more meditation, but that was just a way to get us centered into this moment, into the space. So, okay. Yeah, if you're at work and things get stressful, go in the room and just go in an office, go in the bathroom. There's been times I've been in the bathroom, just rooting my feet firmly into the ground, closing my eyes. And it really just helps me get back into my body and out of all of the stuff that's happening. Um, okay, so it's when you think of yoga, everyone thinks of the physical practice. Um, but there's actually eight limbs of yoga. So you could just be breathing and doing yoga. Um, so we're going to be doing some chair, the physical movements with the chair, but we're going to be really focusing on pranayama. And that's one of the eight limbs. And maybe I'll teach another class at another time about the, the eight different limbs of yoga. So this is generally translated as breath control. It's used to gain mastery over the respiratory process and to help the student recognize the connection between the breath, 
the mind, and the emotions. Pranayama means life force extension. Yogis believe that it is not only rejuvenates the body, but it actually extends life itself. Some people believe that we only have um, so many breasts in this life. And once those are up, however many they are, that's when we go on. And so the more that we practice pranayama, we actually extend that. We extend the amount of life that we have. Not to mention, you know, I know, especially as women leaders, uh, we're always, you know, worried about everything else that's going on in our lives. I personally don't ki have kids, but I totally relate to people who, who do uh, not relate, but I totally understand because I could never do that probably um, how much worry that we take on for our children and uh, people in our lives and our work. And we have so many things going on. And what we don't realize is a lot of the times we're actually constricting our breath. And we'll sit there and be irritated or stressed out. But in all actuality, all we need to do is take a deep breath in through our nose and exhale and just let it go. So we're actually going to practice a simple pranayama. Um, you can close your eyes if you want. Uh, you don't have to. And basically, you're just going to inhale for five. Inhale. One, two, three, four. It's always fun doing this and teaching it. Five. And then exhale. And when you inhale, I want you to, your stomach is going to go out. So it's the opposite, actually, of the way some people breathe. Uh, some people breathe by pulling in the, the diaphragm. And so what you're going to do when you're doing this exercise is inhale, and the stomach is going to go out. So fill the stomach up with air. Awesome. And so now what I want you to do while you're doing that is I want you to take your arms up, inhale up, and then just extend the arms upward, inhale, inhale for five. You guys can do your own counting because I sure will mess it up for each of you. And then exhale. So what we're going to do now is inhale up and exhale. This is something you also can do, obviously, at your chair. I'm sitting in an office chair right now. So inhale up and exhale. And you can do that at the count of five. You can do it quicker, whatever feels right to you. The best thing is just to do it. Like I said, pranayama is a part of yoga. And yoga, you could literally be breathing, and that's yoga. So inhale up. Oh, just extend the arms. And then exhale. So that's the simple one. Um, another good one is um, Dr. Andrew Weil actually is the founder of integrative medicine, I believe at the University of Arizona. And he says that the best exercise for anxiety is the four, seven, eight breath, which a lot of people probably have heard of that because it's very common. Um, but the four, seven, eight breath is you inhale for four and we're going to try this in a minute. And then you hold the breath for seven and then you exhale for eight. So it would be inhale, two, three, four, hold the breath, suspend the breath for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then exhale for eight. I've actually done that exercise and completely forgot that I was stressed out and then went on about my business and was like, oh, you were stressed and you sat down to breathe and you are better now. So that's also a great one. Um, there's a video on YouTube, actually, if you just type in 478, Dr. Andrew Weil will actually take you right through it. So that's a great one as well. So I wanted to go over pranayama. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can share those and then we'll go over them at the end. Okay, so some of you may have heard of chakras. Um, there's hundreds of chakras in our body. Um, chakra in San Sanskrit means wheel and refers to energy points in our body. They are thought to be spinning di discs of energy that should stay open and aligned. And as they correspond to bundles of nerves and major organs, they can actually cause us to have blocked energy in our body. So if any of you have ever done acupuncture or Reiki or anything like that. The places in, in acupuncture that they place the needles, if you went for like an emotional reason, would be based on whatever parts of the body that that energy may be blocked. 
Um, so the main seven are, um, we're going to go through those in a minute. So the main, there's seven main ones in our body. And when I teach soul stretch, I like to focus on one yoga exercise for each each chakra, which is what we're going to do today in the chair. Um, so we're going to go over what they are first, and then we're going to do a brief little uh, yoga flow in our chair to kind of just really bring it home for you guys. Um, so you guys can do this every single day. You can, you know, focus on one chakra at a time. Once you really learn what they are, you'll be able to say, okay, I feel like you know, maybe my third eye is blocked. I want to work on this particular exercise. So let me go to the next one. All right. So the root chakra. So some of you guys have probably heard of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, at the bottom of that is uh, safety, security. That's why it's so important that our root chakra is balanced before anything else. Because if your root chakra is out of alignment, but your heart chakra is great. And the other parts that you guys are going to learn about, you're going to just make wrong decisions. You're going to maybe just do things that are not grounding. So it's so important that we work from the bottom up. Um, we make sure we have that root chakra, which is all about security, safety. Um, if you're in a place of worry about finances or school or whatever it is that you're working on, um, sometimes that's because the root chakra, you don't feel balanced and grounded. So the exercise I actually did at the beginning of this, which was the grounding exercise is amazing for, uh, making you feel safe and secure and, and working on that root chakra. So as you can see in the picture, the root chakra actually represents the color red. So when we do the yoga poses, um, I'm actually going to have you visualize different colors going to different parts of the body. And the reason why I choose those colors is because it represents that particular chakra. So when you think about the root chakra, it's going to be red. Um, I always want to say, is there any questions, but we're holding those for the end. <laughs> um, sacral chakra. So this is basically a little bit above the belly button. And this is like our power center. This is, you know, if you feel like people are stealing your power, or you have no control in your life or, um, you know, you always just feel powerless. This particular chakra could be a little bit out of balance. It's represented by the color yellow, as you can see. So when we get into the, the movement part, um, I will have you guys focus on the color yellow. Solar plexus is just basically right underneath of your chest right on that bone right there and this also correlates to the the power center but it's also creativity it's um you know if you feel like oh i used to paint but i don't paint anymore i used to write and i'm not writing anymore that could be because you have a block in that part of your body and so so really working on that part can help you open that up and just even seeing these colors um yellow and orange basically are the two colors between those two chakras so you can focus on those colors maybe even you know let's say it is art let's say you used to do art maybe starting to paint with those colors will open up that part of you as well heart chakra um this is so easy to get blocked um and you know just an example of how if your root chakra is blocked and your heart chakra is open you may be making decisions that are hurting you that you sh you wouldn't be normally making if your root chakra was more grounded and centered. Um, so that's just how they all kind of play together. Um, it's actually a really cool thing. I love the chakras. And then the, the throat chakra, when the throat chakra is blocked, we're not speaking our truth. We're not asking for what we want. Um, we're afraid of the consequences of the things that we say. A healthy throat chakra would be open um, not afraid to share what we're thinking, obviously, if it's um, not hurtful for other people. So a balanced throat chakra would be speaking your truth, but also being very aware of how that affects others as well. Um, okay, third eye. So this is right here in between the forehead. Um, so this is connected to our intuition. Um, once again, all of this kind of goes back to, you know, decision making, which is a huge thing for leaders. Um, if our 
third eye chakra is not open, we may be making decisions based on fear or things that, you know, may be happening emotionally in our lives. So the third eye chakra is also very important. And when we focus on the third eye, obviously it's a little difficult to do a physical exercise, but as I said, with, with yoga, you could be breathing and you're doing, you're doing yoga. So we will be doing more of a meditation part when we get to the third eye. And then the crown chakra, the crown chakra is what connects us to each other. It's what makes us feel like we want to do big things in the world. Um, when we are connected to our crown chakra, we're more open to collaboration, connecting, sharing. Uh, interpersonal relationships are wonderful when our crown chakra is open. And that's also what connects us spiritually as well. Um, so if you're into the spiritual side of wellness, the crown chakra is something that uh, is amazing to work on. I remember the first time I was in a yoga teacher training and they had us do a meditation and I actually saw a streaming purple light shooting out of the top of my head and I will never forget it. It was so amazing. And if you get into meditation and yoga and stuff and you do this stuff a lot, those things will start to happen because you are really connected to nature and, and the universe, which is a, a beautiful expanding thing. So those are the seven chakras. And here is my affirmation that I created for 2022. If anybody wants to copy it, uh, paradise is coming. I already paid the price. The reason why I chose this is because I always feel like, I think we all, I think most people I know are like this, where we always feel like we have to work so hard to obtain things. It's like, Oh yeah, I'm not worthy of that. I have to go through more stuff. And We've all been through so much. And about six months ago, I was thinking to myself, you know what? No, I've already paid the, the price. The things I want in my life are coming. And so I created this affirmation. And so I try to repeat this in my head when I start to get into that place of, oh, well, you have to go through more struggle. If you don't go through more struggle, you're not going to get to where you want to go. So this is my affirmation for this year. And if you guys want to use it, you can. We're also going to create some affirmations today. Okay, let me see. I could talk forever, so I have to check the time. All right, so we're, I'm going to scroll back because while I'm showing you these exercises, I want to have the, um, them up on the screen. All right, so once again, you're going to just get comfortable. You may be just watching this, but get comfortable in your space. If somebody can let me know if the music gets too loud. Um, but we're just going to go through one, basically one exercise for each area. Turn this up. Okay, so I want you guys to bring your awareness back to your breath. Beginning to feel your feet rooting firmly into the ground. And for the root chakra, I just want you to take your hands above your head once again and just hold them straight up into the sky. And while you're reaching up, I want you to push your feet down into the ground. I always like the statement, I am a spiritual being having a human experience. So when we reach up into the sky like this, we're connecting to everything, but then we're also grounding ourselves in the moment. And let's do that breath that we talked about, keeping your hands up in the air. The breath that I taught you where you inhale for five and exhale for five. I just want you to do that while you're holding this exercise. Inhale for five and exhale for five. The benefits of holding the yoga pose is it helps to move stuck energy out of your body. If any of you've ever done yin yoga, that's a super beneficial one. So keeping those hands up in the sky. Inhaling and exhaling. If any thoughts come to mind, just bring your awareness to your breath. Okay. 
Okay, and now we're going to, I want you to basically unclench your hands, bring them down to your side. And what we're gonna do now is inhale up. Let me move this. Inhale up. And then I want you to reach all the way forward to the ground. And when you do this, you can hang and just let it all go. Or you can keep yourself tight. I don't know if you can see me, but you're basically just reaching up and then down into the back. So if you're at work and you feel like, I just want you to stay there. Um, if you feel like you're feeling powerless or maybe fearing sharing ideas, that's a good time to do this exercise. So just hold it there. And while you're holding that, I want you to picture the color orange. And I want you to picture that, that color going down right below your belly button. So if you can bring your awareness to an orange color down below your belly button. Make sure you're not holding your breath. It's the most common thing to do. Holding that same exercise. And now whenever you're ready, as safely as you can, I want you to come back to a seated position. And you're going to take your hands behind your buttocks, your glute muscles, and you're just going to reach back. Now, if you have any back issues, just be very careful. You're basically just opening up that part of your chest. And I just want you to mentally imagine the color yellow going down into that area. And just stay there in that space. Awesome. And now you're going to do that same exercise, but you're just going to open it up even more. You can take your hands up, but the whole point of this exercise is to open up the space in your chest. You can take your arms back. You can take your arms up. If you want to, you can actually sit up and put your hands down. And I want you to picture the color green now, going into your heart. Beautiful. Just holding that back. And now I just want you to come back to a regular seated position wherever you are. And for the next three, we're actually gonna do more of a meditation. If you feel like moving around, you 100% can. Um, intuitive yoga is also great where you just move with whatever you feel. Um, but for most, just come to a seated position. You can bring your thumb to your forefinger if you want. And you can close your eyes. And so we're actually going to move from the crown back to the root for this exercise. So I want you to close your eyes if that you haven't already. And I want you to picture coming in through the top of your head, the color purple. Your entire top of your head is being filled with this beautiful violet light. You can picture it as though you've just put a crown on your head. And just imagining that purple light going all through every area of your mind, of the top of your head.
This is where our visions come from as leaders. And now I want you to see that light turning into a green color and coming in through your third eye. Just visualizing it turning green and coming down. And then it's gonna come down in through your throat. And as you're sitting here in this space, I want you to visualize that color turning almost a blue color and it's in your throat. And I want you to repeat this affirmation in your mind as you're visualizing that color. It is safe for me to speak my truth. It is safe for me to speak my truth. You may notice emotions come up when you say that. Um, if they do, you can just simply come back to your breath, exhale it out of the body. That helps remove the emotion from your body. It is safe for me to speak my truth. And now I want you to bring your awareness down to your heart picturing the color green. And I want you to repeat this affirmation. It is safe for my heart to be open. It is safe for my heart to be open, picturing the color green. And now let it go down a little bit further into your solar plexus, picturing the color yellow. And I want you to repeat this affirmation in your mind. The world needs my creativity. The world needs my creativity. Once again, if you tend to, to go out of your book, body and into your mind, just bring your attention back to your breath. And now we're going to take that awareness a little bit lower, just above the belly button, anywhere down there is fine to your sacral chakra. It is safe for me to be in my power. I want you to mentally say that to yourself as you picture a yellowish orange color. It is safe for me to be in my power, my authentic power. And continuing to breathe and not holding your breath. And then we're gonna come back to to our root chakra, rooting us back into this ground that we're in, picturing the color red, red going down in between your tailbone into the ground. Our heart is open. Our throat is open. Our creativity is open. Our power is open, but we're also grounded, very grounded in this moment. And I just want you to repeat this affirmation as you visualize the color red and you can visualize that red in every cell of your body if you want to. And you can say, it is safe for me to be me. It is safe for me to be myself. It is safe for me to be myself. I have everything I need to be myself. And now let's just take our hands up. We're gonna close this out. Inhale up, reaching into the sky, feet on the ground and exhale. One more deep breath in and exhale. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Okay, good job everybody. I can't see you. I'm so used to seeing people. 
Um, but we're going to move into the section of this presentation where we set some wonderful goals. So in the chat, um, are you guys able to share the little workbook that I sent out? If not, I can totally get it. Yes, the workbook link has been shared in the chat. Awesome. Now I'm going to get it from you guys <laughs> so I don't have to open anything. Um, all right. Can you see it on the screen? Let me close that. Yes. Okay, beautiful. So a few years ago, um, let me pull this up. I had some pretty amazing things happen to me based off of intentions that I created. And I'll just share a brief story so you guys can put into perspective how powerful this stuff can be. Let me present this. Um, so on the screen, you will see a quote that I wrote called, um, if you can shape it in your mind, you will find it in your life. Um, my whole life, I kind of was what some people call manifesting. I just didn't have that word for it. But I always felt like if I was focused on things and I had faith in those things that they would come about. But I saw it in a much bigger way. Um, so I moved back to the town that I live in in 2010. And when I moved back here, it was kind of scary because I had left in 2005 to this is, I don't know if you've ever heard of West Virginia University, but when I was in college, it was the number one party school. And so we, you know, it was hard to really be anyone and create things here without getting, you know, pulled into those kind of things. And so I left with the intention that one day I would come back and I knew that I would have to bring, you know, my own thing here, or it just, it wasn't going to work for me because I knew that what I was destined to do was not in my town. And so in 2010, I moved back here. I had just started my business, the University of Wellness. And my ultimate intention was to have a wellness center that I could be a part of, that my business could be a part of. And then I could also travel and connect with other people and learn new things and bring them back here and then ultimately have an online business. And you know, as things happen in our life, we, you know, our minds expand and they open and we see things that are more possible than we ever thought before. But anyway, fast forward to 2015, I was getting my executive MBA and the last semester was to create a project. It could have been a project on, you know, improving something in your organization. It could have been whatever we wanted it to be. So I went to the professor and said, can I create a business plan for a wellness center? And they were like, yeah, sure. Why not? So that was going to be my plan. I was going to create a business plan for a wellness center. Did I believe it was going to happen? Yeah, but I had no real way of knowing how. Um, so I started to develop the plan and then I just started to hear in the community of different people who were had similar ideas. Uh, one person wanted to expand the, the skating rink that we have. Uh, one person wanted a new track because the high schools in my town um, didn't have very nice tracks. Then our WVU was actually entering into the Big 12 and uh, they couldn't be in the Big 12 unless they had a new fancy swimming pool. And so I met this guy that was real on board with the hockey rink and he was actually from Canada. Sometimes I wonder if he was like an angel because he just like left after all of this happened. But him and I started to work together on it and he wanted to update the um, old skating rink and I wanted to have a wellness center. And so he knew more people in town. And so we ended up meeting with the athletic director at West Virginia University and he basically was like, well, build the place and we'll be a customer. We'll pay rent and have our pool there. That way the aquatic center, or that's what it is now, but the wellness center can have, it can belong to the community and not to the university. Cause sometimes, you know, that gets a little tricky for the community people. And so we were like, holy, this is amazing. So I end up writing this whole plan, getting feedback from the, uh, community. I held 
meetings in the community and just really took a lot of input from what other people wanted and not just me. And I presented this plan to the city during my MBA and it obviously gave me an MBA, but the city ran with my business plan. And about three years ago, a $55 million aquatics and wellness center opened in my town and seeing that happen just made my mind expand way beyond comprehension into what I believed was possible for me. And so I decided to get my doctorate. And in that time, I started developing leadership trainings and it just went from wellness to leadership to beyond. And so I started to develop leadership trainings and created the Brave Leadership School. And I'm so excited because Brave Leadership School and the University of Wellness are now going to be in this amazing space. I moved into an office about a month ago, um, but we've it's just been crazy with the weather. And um, now that I'm a professor at WVU and adjunct faculty at the University of Arizona, um, I've just been kind of all over the place, but we are launching a leadership center at that place. And so the whole reason why I'm telling you this is the more clear that we can get on our goals the more we're going to show up and the more things that are going to show up for us to make it happen. And seeing that happen was just, I live in Morgantown, West Virginia, which is about as small city as you can get. So for that to happen here, it's, it can happen anywhere. Um, so that's why I want to focus a little bit today on setting some goals, setting some intentions. Um, and that way you guys can really start to do the same thing if you haven't already. Um, we're going to go back to the workbook. So we gave you a link for a workbook that I started to create uh, for Soul Stretch. And the first page has at the top a dream journal. Um, And so when we create our intentions, it's easy to say, I hope I will become or, you know, just speaking in a language as though it didn't happen already. The best way to manifest and attract what we want in our life is to almost mentally imagine it's already happening. For 10 years, I've envisioned myself having an office inside of an amazing state of the art wellness center. And then life happened and it's a hundred mile an hour. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm actually here. How did that happen? But that's because my mind, there was no question in my mind. I never had a question of if or when it was, this is going to happen. And I truly believe, especially if you study like quantum physics, that that had a lot to do with it actually happening. So I want you guys to just take a minute, um, if you can write on this or write in your little journals. And I want you to write an intention for yourself. Um, So an example of that could be, um, I graduated from the University of Arizona, say you're a new student, I graduated from the the University of Arizona with a 4.0, and I got a job as the director of accounting. That is basically stating what you want. Um, And as you can see with my story, what I wanted expanded once that came about. So that could also happen for you guys. So I just want you to take a moment and just think for a second, if you could be anything realistically, um, what would it be? I am. And I'd love to have, if anybody wants to come off mute and share when they're done writing, that would be awesome. Another example could be, I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I am a doctorate student. I am a mother. Um, I am a grandmother. It can be whatever. I always say that when you're writing intentions, don't write from a place of superficial kind of things. Write more about things that are going to make you feel things like I am confident in being a leader at my organization because when you can connect to the feeling of it, that's what's going to make it happen faster, is connecting to what it feels like to make it happen. I'll give you guys another minute. 
Anybody want to share? Somebody needs to share. <laughs> and then the next part of this little, oh, wait, there's someone here maybe. So Brandy wrote, I am a healthy, happy person. My life doesn't center around work. I do what I love, but only to the extent that I love it. And I know how to say no. Perfect. Yes. The more you tell yourself that, the more opportunities. Well, that's another thing is the more opportunities will come about for you to say no. Um, so get really good at that. Um, anybody else? And this could be, you know, you could pick a part of your life that you feel is the most important and focus there. So say you're feeling, you're not feeling so good in your body or your career, maybe it's not, you know, where you want it to be. You can just simply focus on one specific area if you want, um, which me, brings me down to the next section where it says personal affirmation. Um, when I'm writing affirmations, I like to write affirmations based around whatever is bothering me at the time. Um, so just an example, like I'm literally just starting to date, but it makes me so anxious. Um, and so a good one for me would be something around dating. Like I am confident and secure when I date or whatever that may be. Um, it could totally be around whatever you're working on. I try to stay away from any negative language at all in the personal affirmation and just have it be. Um, so you wouldn't write in the affirmation, I know how to say no, because that you're bringing that into the affirmation. So it would be more like, I am great at saying no, or I always put myself first or whatever affirmation that that would be. Um, because sometimes we think it's selfish to put ourselves first, but we, you know, they always tell you to put the oxygen mask on. And that's because, you know, if we put ourselves and our needs first, we can show up for other people better. And I don't mean like, oh, your kids need a babysitter. You just go off and do yoga. But, you know, making sure that we take the time for ourselves is so important. Um, and then down in the box below that, you're going to write your motivation for achieving these things. And I actually like, you know, I just talked about the Lunar New Year. The Lunar New Year is actually the beginning of the um, the, cal the the moon calendar, um, however you say that. And um, I always like to set intentions during the new moon because that's when we have new energy coming in. So I look at this stuff when I'm, you know, on target. I try to look at this stuff like once a month it, during the, the new moon time. Full moon is when you can write down things that you want to let go of, what you want to release those things during that time. Okay, anybody else want to share? You can type it or say it, whatever you feel comfortable doing. All right, so the next thing is dream list. Um, I worked with a lady a few years ago that, that trained with Richard Branson. And Richard Branson, some of you know, is a gazillionaire and obviously is very good at creating the things that he wants to create. And he always told his mentees to focus on five things a year. So, you know, instead of being like, I'm going to write a book and open a magazine and do this and that you literally narrow it down to five. And then that actually helps you say no when people ask you to do things that are outside of those five things. So, you know, this is something that you'll probably have to take some time to do outside of this particular uh, workshop, but just really think about, you know, if you have a list of 30 things that you want to accomplish this year, how can you break that down to five big things? Um, and when I say five, it's like the big things that you would be doing. Um, so I think of a friend of mine that works here and um, she's getting a doctorate, just wrote a book. Um, those kind of things would be listed out as things that you would accomplish. And then if someone says, hey, do you want to do, you know, start a, a business on a cruise ship that's completely out of left field, then she would know to say no, because it's not on her list. And obviously things are going to happen, you know, things will come about that will surprise you and maybe you'll get more motivated and inspired towards other things, but at least 
you have this roadmap to stick with. Um, so that'll help you break the big vision down into five things that you can do. Okay, I also included in here is what I like to call soul sessions. Um, it's so easy for us to spend so much time worried about what other people, that we lose sight of what it is that we want. And so a few years ago, I learned this thing where we, you just sit and ask yourself, what is my soul calling for? What is my soul calling for? So I want you guys to take just a couple of minutes and just get in that space where you can write for a minute and just ask yourself, what is my soul calling for right now? More love, more confidence, more connection, more friends, whatever it is, just listen to what your own self is telling you. And we'll take a minute for that too. Someone said, I respect and honor myself needs and desires. That's perfect. And when we say these affirmations, things show up that will help us honor ourselves, our needs and our desires. And yes, when we say no to things that no longer serve us, we say yes to the things that are right. This goes for, I know some of you have heard of like the, um, the art of cleaning your head. That's not the name of it. It's that book about like, organizing your house. I've seen things happen where I would organize a room and then it literally opened up stuff to come into my life almost immediately. Um, so those are, it's good to do those kind of things too. That's actually what helped me get rid of things that I held on to for years. I always felt like books, especially that I would never get rid of them. If I bought a book, it was going to be with me forever. And I actually just got rid of like 40 of them, which is massive for me, but I made room for so much more. What is your soul calling for is the last question. What is your soul calling for? Yes. Magical art of tidying up. That's a good one. It's funny because I've actually never read that book, but I feel like it's great advice. I should have read it. I think it came out when I was starting my doctorate. Does anybody want to share what their soul is calling for? What is your soul call? Oh, I'm reading what you said. Does anybody want to share? Mine is routine. My soul is so wanting me to be on more of a routine because I kind of, one day I'm up late, the next day I get up early, like it's just all over the place. And it's kind of been that way since the pandemic and it's not super healthy. Um, so my soul is really calling me to sit down and create a routine. Um, and now that my in-person classes started, I can do that. So that's an example of something that our soul is calling for. Anybody have any they want to share? Build, create, make things, connect, anything specific? I bought so many art things when the pandemic happened and I actually started to do knitting. I made these, I'll show you. I made this blanket. It's like chunky, thick blanket. This is very meditative to do those kind of things. And that's not something I ever thought that I would do in my life. Definitely didn't think that. So that your, your soul could be calling you to knit. Thank you, Brandy. I have like a hundred of them because I was making them while I was reading my books for my doctorate. Care about others more. So when you think about that, um, when you think about your soul calling you to care about others more, you can set goals around that. Um, an example, like when I began my doctorate, 
they had us write down our different roles that we have in our life, like mother, sister, wife, whatever it is. And then we put those things in our calendar to make sure that we didn't lose track of those. And so I committed, which I didn't stick to going and seeing my nephew and niece every Sunday. So that could be a goal that you could put in is something that you can do to care about others more, whatever that would be. Okay. If nobody else has anything else to share, I'd like to just do a little releasing meditation and then we can open it up for questions and answers. My soul is telling me to be more in prayer. That's beautiful. Yep. We don't take the time to listen to the soul very often. <laughs> awesome. You can keep them coming. Um, but what we're going to do now is just do a little releasing meditation to let go of anything that may be holding us back. So once again, I'm going to have you guys close your eyes if you can. And just bring your awareness to your breath. Our breath is the one thing that we all have in common. It connects us to each other. Without it, we can't live. It's the most important thing, yet the thing we pay attention to the least. So bringing your attention to your breath. And I want you to bring into your mind something that you would like to leave right here in this moment and not take with you when you leave this call. And I want you to make it about a feeling, not necessarily a situation. So, for example, if you're having insecurities around money is always like just a, a common thing for most people. Um, if you're having insecurities around money or health, or any of those things like that. I want you to just mentally bring whatever that feeling is. And I want you to just name it inside of you. Like I feel fear when it comes to my health or I feel fear when it comes to my um, money. And I want you to allow yourself to just sit and feel that feeling. And I'll explain why after. And then I want you to take a deep inhale in and let that stomach just fill up with air and then exhale and let it go. Just release it. Just picture it just going away from you, whatever that is. Inhaling and exhaling. We spend our whole life avoiding feelings that if we allow ourselves to feel an exhale could literally leave our body, some people say, within 90 seconds, which is just amazing when you think about it, that we will avoid filling a certain filling by eating bad or smoking or drinking or whatever our vices are. And we literally, if we just took the time to just feel it and own it and release it, it no longer has power. Keeping your eyes shut, I just want you to say that affirmation that I gave you guys at the beginning. Paradise is coming. I already paid the price. Paradise is coming. I already paid the price. I can feel my cells opening up when I say that. So let's say it one more time. Paradise is coming. I already paid the price. And so it is. Okay, guys, if you guys have questions, I would love to hear them. Um, I've probably put you guys to sleep. It's, it's so funny doing this and just looking at a screen. Any questions at all? Hi, everyone. If anybody wants to come off of mute or turn your cameras on to ask questions, feel free to do that. Thank you, Lauren. If anybody had any experiences during that, they can share it, even if it's a negative one. Um, you know, even if you felt like negative things come up or, you know, feel free to share because that's how we learn the most when it comes to this stuff. Um, I went to a yoga teacher training one time and the lady at literally at the first day, it was a very intense training. She said, you're going to hate me. 
90% of you are going to want to leave. Um, and she like really reiterated how much we were going to hate her. And I think it was Saturday afternoon. I was like, I do not like this lady. I do not like this training. I do not, I, I literally need to get out of here. And I think a friend of mine on text talked me out of it. And by Sunday, I loved her. She was the greatest person who ever entered my life. She just made me feel things I did not want to feel. So, um, oh, you're welcome, Gina and Lauren. Thank you guys for being here so much. Um, if you guys have questions, email me. Um, I have tons of resources. I didn't want to just give you guys too much, but I can always send them. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take a moment to share my thoughts. This was incredible, Krista. It, re it really was. It helped, it helped me to relax. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a tightly wound person. So, so, so getting, getting me to relax is, is something. And I think, you know, like a lot of, a lot of folks here, you know, are, are kind of, we're all in the same boat in that we push ourselves a lot. And sometimes we don't take the time uh, you know, um, to, to, to think about ourselves and, and think about what we want and what really, what really brings us happiness and contentment. So I think this was absolutely phenomenal. I would love to hear what, what other people think as well. If you guys want to chime in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cause I'm sitting here like, I don't know if they liked it or not. Cause I'm literally oh, we loved it. Loved it. <laughs> yeah. Like when I do this in person, I know because they're, they're there, but, um, Oh, thank you. You would love, thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Um, yeah, all this stuff you can 100% do at home. If I was teaching the chakra version in person, um, I actually use oils for each chakra. So I would bring the oils around. So if you guys are into oils, um, and I would actually have them also, if they want, they would smell the oil that represented the chakra and that helps even more. Um, so I don't know if any of you guys like essential oils, I kind of go in and out with them. Sometimes I love them and sometimes I don't want to smell them at all. Um, which my friend is actually a chemist and she said the ones that you don't like are the ones that you need the most because they're, they're triggering something within you. Um, yes, I actually have a sheet. I'll email it to you and it tells you what oils go with, which chakras. Yep. I definitely don't have that in my head, but I will send it. Thank you for the feedback. That's great, Brandy. I actually used to be very, um, when I was more in my fitness mind, I thought the yoga and the meditation stuff was just stupid. I, that was my mindset. Um, but then after I experienced it, um, then I was like, okay, I was the one that was being stupid by resisting it. So um, and then the more you practice it, the more you'll love it. Like a lot of people say they hate Shavasana, which is the end of yoga where you're laying on the ground. And I actually go to yoga for that part now. Um, and when I first started, I hated it because it was like I was in my, my head the whole time. Oh, good. Yeah, Jenny, that's awesome. You guys are so quick for with articles. You can tell you all are doctors. <laughs> Any other questions, thoughts? Um, I actually think I have a recording of a chakra meditation too, if I can find it. Anything else? I'm trying to think. Thank you so much. I appreciate the feedback. It's not really one of those workshops where you would have a ton of questions because it's more like internal type stuff. So yeah, all right. I don't know who takes over for me, but I'm still here. I'm here for however long you guys need if you have questions, but if you guys want to wrap it up, whatever. Okay, I will be glad to do that. Well, thank you as always, Carissa. I mean, thank you, you. Do a phenomenal job on these workshops. You, you truly do. If you, if you were closer to me, you would be, you would be my personal yoga trainer <laughs> therapist I, pr I promise you would you do such a great job and we are just so excited uh, to, to have you here you. so so thank you for sharing this with everybody I know we're all wa walking away with some uh, some great skills to help us relax and be more more centered and, and focused and mindful uh, moving forward so thank you to all of our attendees and just a heads up we have lots of good stuff going on uh, in the month of February. So be sure to head over to the CWL website and check out some of our upcoming events. 
Um, we are going to have a panel discussion and a free documentary uh, coming up on February uh, 10th regarding healthcare inequities. We've got a, another uh, Women in the Workforce uh, post-pandemic workshop coming up on February the 18th. And on February the 24th, we have a community chat uh, focusing on living in possibility and staying positive while balancing work and life relationships, which have just become more and more challenging these days. And then also, um, please keep in mind, we are going to have some fun events coming up also in March, which is International Women's Day uh, month. So be looking ahead for that as well. So thank you guys for attending. Um, please stay connected with us. Uh, reach out to us with any questions. And a huge thank you to Carissa. Thank you, guys. That was fun. Have a good day. I'm going to go outside to the 20 degree weather. Take my dog out. <laughs> Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye.